Hi, it's Andrew from Home Theatre Engineering and I am finally here. This is the Banks Peninsula in New Zealand and it is magnificent. It's really, truly gorgeous and I'm excited to be here. This is the tail end of a four week home theatre installation setup and calibration road trip and this is the last job on that list. So uh, come with me, take a drive, let's go and get to this location. I'm really looking forward to this one. This is something I've been working on for a very long time. Okay, so a little bit more about this. This is an interesting architectural home and we were approached by the owner to come and do some work in an existing cinema. Now, the, not only is the home unusually shaped and designed, but so is the cinema itself. We shipped the equipment here. We worked uh, for a long time with Aaron, the owner, and he unpacked it and he installed it. And now we're about to reach the conclusion. So I'm here to check all the equipment to do the calibration, to take this thing to its absolute maximum potential, and that's what this is gonna be all about, and I'm really looking forward to it. Which one's the doorbell? Hi Andrew, come on in. Oh my goodness, Aaron, Andrew, how are you? it's so good to see you in real in real life. Please come on in. Thanks Welcome. very much. Thank you. Welcome to the, the curvy copper Cass Bay construction. <laughs> it's been so long. I it's know. Just, it's incredible. Yeah. I it just, I don't know. I mean, to, to be here after yeah. so long, talking to you on the phone. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. What, a year or more, maybe? I can't, long I can't time, remember. Long time. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. So what do you think? <laughs> it's really fascinating. Take you by surprise. Um, I, I, you know, the copper on the outside and the walls, it's just... You know, and even the entrance is, is, is an interesting journey. So, yeah. yeah. I, look, um, I've heard so much about it. Please yeah. tell, well, me, tell me about it. I mean, it. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, we're, we're in, in the middle of the curve of the whole thing. I mean, I, I, you know, this, is, this is not here for your, for your benefit, which is always here, to be fair. <laughs> but, you know, you've come in through this, this curve. Oh, that's the, um, the entrance here. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, the whole house, as, as we talked about, you know, and we'll, we'll talk about that shortly, but mm. we, the, the theatre's curved because the house is curved. Exactly. All right, where do we go from here? Well, um, I'm going to take you down to the cinema, which okay. is actually directly below us. Great. And um, yeah, let's have a look at that, shall we? Looking forward to it. All right. Down into the dungeon. Okay, so this is, this is sort of the basement of the house. We're actually sort of underground now, Andrew. Yep. This has all been dug out and it's awesome. completely hidden. Um, now, I happen to know you... You, you had a previous life as a magician. I did. So, um, in your shows, mm. in your performances, was there a word you used, a special word, a magic word that maybe there were probably could a do magic? I mean, the classic, of course, you know, especially with the younger audience, was abracadabra. But the one I yes. used to actually use a lot was open sesame. Oh, yeah. open sesame. Yes, yes. Oh, that's that's a good word to to use. <laughs> That's exactly uh, how we want to get in here. Oh, uh, <laughs> you, you know what? Like, because this was in the plans, but seeing it, seeing it for real is amazing. Yeah, pretty cool. Let's uh, please come have a wee yeah, look. I'd love to. Yep. Yeah. Here we yeah, are. Gosh, well, in the thing. underground, in the prohibition bar. It's amazing. <laughs> it's you know I'm intimately familiar with this, obviously yes. from the designs, but it's very different being here. It's this is a lot more personal. Um, it, on the plans, it looked like a, you know, even though we had the measurements, yep. and I know the measurements, yes. but um, this is intimate and warm and cosy, and, yes. I, and I love it. It's well, great. I've spent many hours on, on FaceTime with you down here, <laughs> with you being in Perth. We have, yeah. <laughs> um, it so, is. It's a real, it's a different world. It's a real escape from everything outside, but it, it still carries that curve that we saw up the top. Yes, yes. Because you literally walked in directly above us. Right. And it's a, and it's a concrete bunker i mean it's concrete lid concrete walls concrete block gosh um and it's 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 why is, is it sort of to the scale you imagined everything uh, the scale is different it yeah. feels different um yes. you know obviously the dimensions are exactly the same but yes. yeah the scale feels different but it feels i think i said earlier it feels much more cozy and welcoming yep um yeah I, mm. yeah it's Cool. It's it's weird being here after such an extended time of having worked on the project. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, I think it's time for you to get all your tools yes. and toys. Yes. And um, 
set up in here for three days for the next three days <laughs> let's get into it hey? sounds good all right, all right cheers cool. day four so andrew mm. <laughs> um we're done what an exhausting three days really it's been a long and um interesting process so. yeah yeah everything every cinema we've ever done the customer has a story yep and you know they're normally quite an emotional story mm. um you've gone to great effort to build this cinema and in the way you have and in the place that you have yes and i'm i'm really interested in that yeah okay uh well why cinema i mean i've i've always loved loved the movies mm. and um you know a, as a kid i would make my own little projector out of an old tea box and and, and project things up onto the wall before you could you know could they even sort yep. of existed and always interested in things like slides and static static stuff as well as like eight millimeter and 16 millimeter film but um the, the dream was always one day to have a home home cinema mm. um and i i would read about these things and then ultimately watch youtube videos about these things and in our previous house i actually did build a cinema mm. and uh you know it was a a rectangular traditional sort of shaped cinema about nine nine or ten seats i think it was um had a, a panasonic projector and a fairly modest sort of setup with lcrs and surrounds so it was actually five a 5.1 had a sub as well mm -hmm. so um so we had that and i kind of knew that that a home theater in, in in the world was was a good thing and uh, i've always been keen to like improve it but then we we ultimately approached an architect to, to do this house for us mm. and, and come up with these designs and i put all my trust in the architect and said um look we needed one of the requirements or the, the wish wish list is we'd like a theater and we you know we wanted garaging and some three bedrooms and all the rest of it and you know i left it to him to come up with the ideas mm. and uh, he presented plans to us and you know the first time i saw the curved theater room with all the seats set up on the curve my reaction was can you do that like is that is that okay and then i'm thinking in in the world of architecture he broke so many rules um <laughs> with the whole house that it actually made sense for this to be curved oh, I've, I've got to speak to that so yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been here for three days this house is unlike any mm. other house i've been in i mean not even close. Yeah. You know, I remember one house in the south of Western Australia that was like a maritime house, you yes. know, and yep. that's probably the, it, not like this, but the closest feel I've ever, uh, you know, experienced. But, yes. But this house is uh, unique. And, and I know we talked about the home before I got here yep. uh, many times, but uh, the, the journey that you went on, you know, mm. from the copper cladding to the curves, there's not... I don't think there's a square room in the house. You know, it, the, the house is inspiring and different and relaxing. And then you come downstairs and of course we've seen the, mm. uh, the, the secret entrance. Yep. Um, and, I, and that secret entrance, you know, that's something I've always dreamed of as well. You know, the, uh, the, all, the, all the films that have the secret door and the secret panel and, and actually probably goes back to my, my, my childhood days of Scooby-Doo and, the, mm. you know, the, the, the double door. Yes. It's to me. It's a real sense of occasion to come into mm. a into a, mm. a, a theatre room, mm. and and I want it to be a complete escape. Mm. And so this, we're totally underground. Mm. You know, we we it's been dug out of the ground, a mm. giant hole. It was the it's the it's sort of the whole house sort of rests in this thing. And you know, the, you, you sort of look at it as we're excavating into it, and you sort of see this giant, giant pit, and that's actually where the theatre lives in the belly. And then it's all covered with dirt and, and surrounded, and it's like a sort of a secret bunker or yeah. a panic room. <laughs> and you have deliberately taken a, a big decision to make the home cinema a significant part of the whole cost of this home i mean we, yeah we talked about as that it turned day. out it, yeah as yeah. it and that wasn't something i sort of thought a lot about during mm. the building process mm. but certainly hindsight is 2020 vision and you know looking back at it it's it's a massive expense mm. to actually have to dig additional volume out of the ground and then reinforce that and waterproof it and then structurally build above it to support the rest of the house so but all that to say absolutely no regrets mm. i'm going to say from that um I, I guess the thing I didn't uh, count on was actually how it would be to be in it myself. I mean, I'd, I'd been working with plans and models for so long, and then when we actually scooped it out and built it, and I walked into it for the first time, and we put the chairs in for the first time, I got it. Like, it's yes, it's like no other cinema, 
but um, it's cinematic. You know, it, it it reminds me of the of the big theatres like you know, Odeon in London. We've talked about and and you know how you come in and it's a, and it's wide and it's not tall, mm. but what what it lacks for in height, it makes up for in width and curvaceousness. When you walk in here, mm. it is different. It is cinematic. It is uh, an experience from the get-go, from the door yes. into the seats, the curvature of the room, the width of the sound, yeah. um, and so many other things. So, yeah, look, I take my hat off to you, and, and I think, you know, um, it must have been amazing for you when the building was finished and you really, and it was all done, carpet was in, and you yeah. walked in here the first time. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting, like, when you say all done, you know, uh, the, the people, the viewers probably don't realise that mm. um, this was all done by me. I, I didn't know you at the time. Mm, I, no. I hadn't. I didn't know about home theatre engineering. No, no, no. You know, I, I actually completed this this room. Mm. Uh, I had existing speakers that I put in. They were they were old, nineteen seventies Celestian studio monitors, like mm. big big audio speakers, as left and rights. And I had a, a BMW eight hundred, I think it was, centre speaker, right, yeah. LCRs, and you know, um, some very basic. Um, surround speakers i didn't have atmos etc and i was i was running at that time a, a sony projector yeah. um and i had my own screen and i had a i had a, a masquerade screen now i don't know if you can i don't think you can still get these now but this was a, a screen that um auto, had, auto masking auto screen. masking you know yeah. and and to me that was a really big part of the theater and we had that in our previous house where the movie starts and it goes from 16 by 9 to out to scope and it all happens sort of magically and it reveals the movie and it's you know that reminds me of the times in the cinemas when the old projector would flip its lens and mm. anamorphic lens kind of comes in and, and the lights go down mm. etc so you know I, I i have this kind of phobia i've always had this phobia of of installers and calibrate <laughs> well actually calibrator wasn't a word i, I knew about yeah, but yeah. but of installate or home theater professional companies that you know high-end theater companies that would have glossy showrooms with lovely demo rooms. Mm. I've been burnt in the past where I've kind of gone in and I've, you know, to be fair, I'm not going to name any names, but I've been snobbed mm. and, and they've sort of looked me up and down and thought, mm, you can't afford one of these or, mm. or you, you know, you know, you're not interested in what we have to, I don't know, I don't know what it was, mm. but, um, you know, it, it left a bad taste mm. and, I guess they were always sort of presenting as if they wanted to sell me something that they had ready to go and and all the rest of it. And I don't know, I, I just sort of thought, I'm going to do this myself. So I sort of pushed on through. But I guess I've always been kind of frustrated that I've never been able to take it to that next that next level, which mm. is sort of like, how, what's the best we can get out of this yep. room? Yep. What's the best kind of... And I'm not, not, not spending money for the sake of spending money, but what's right for the room? Like, mm. what's right for what I want to... how I want to use it, the size... You know, you know how, how many people are going to be listening, all those sort of things. Where do I want to take this to? What do I want? Exactly. Yeah. The, the room itself being, being this shape um, was a challenge working remotely because, I mean, we, we'd been in communication, remember, and, and you're from Perth and I'm in, in mm. Christchurch, and we actually had some COVID travel restrictions, I a think, at play. And also, just for the viewers, we're, we're more than, I think, 5,000 kilometres apart. That's yeah. right, yeah. And so it's, it's technical challenges that Andrew can't just get on a plane and get here. We knew that going into the whole thing. We knew that the time would come when you could get here to ultimately calibrate. Mm. But meanwhile, if I'm going to do this, it'll be working remotely mm -hmm. and you'll be sending a gear and so on. So the first part of that was um, we, you know, I, I, I 3D scanned the room. Like we talked about this using this tech and we, we used, I can't remember whether I used a phone or a device to do it. But, you know, this is a, this is a complex geometry. You had plans. Mm. But, you know, um, you and Enzo needed to see a, a 3D model of the room. So you, you got that. And I remember uh, the calls with, with Enzo and he'd, he'd taken the 3D model and thrown it, thrown it into your CAD program. Yes, uh, um, SketchUp. SketchUp, yep. SketchUp yep. and he'd placed speakers in. And we were talking through scenarios of like where I might be sitting, uh, how many speakers we might have in the room and just the differences all those speakers might make and sort of visualizing yeah. sound waves and things like that. Um, and I remember a, another criteria that I kind of laid down, I put a lot of restrictions on this really for you, was that I'm sitting, I'm going to be sitting at the back of the room. The primary position, mm. the primary chair is right at the back of the room. And, and for those that don't understand, sitting hard against the back wall is not the, the best option. But I think, you know, we had a conversation mm. about this. Um, this room... It, this room is curved and angled, and I, I won't get too technical into it, but a square or, rectang or a rectangular room mm. is predictable. It's measurable and predictable. Yep. 
um, uh, to a degree. Uh, even there, doing the maths is, is, is difficult because of different construction materials and things like that. In a curved room, modeling a curved room is exceptionally difficult. Mm. So the outcome is unpredictable, but it also means that a curved room behaves differently to a rectangular room. So what's happened in this room is that the normal behavior room has pretty much gone out of a window that, mm, you, that mm. you don't have. Yep. And so this room has worked to your benefit, our mutual benefit, mm. and some of the challenges that we would have had, had this been a rectangular room, have gone. Yeah, so I remember, you know, we, we, we did the first audio calibration on day one, mm. and I remember you sitting in the back row there with me, and you were like, I think you were pretty impressed with what we got, considering like where we were sitting. You're like, this is actually pretty done pretty well. Yeah, so I was, I was, you, you, you never know what's gonna happen. Mm. You know, you can have all the plans and all the ideas and all the thoughts and all the schemes, but until you hit that button, you don't yep. know what's gonna happen. No. Nope. And the, what immediately hit me was, this sounds like a cinema. Mm. And the reason for that is because, unlike a rectangular room, yep. uh, we have width in here now in a it's actually wider than it is deeper it is yeah and in a commercial cinema you have width you yep. normally if you're lucky enough to sit in the middle yep. um you have a long distance to your speakers we have a long distance to the speakers here yep and so for the key seats the first two seats in the middle it's yep. working exceptionally well it's got this real spaciousness mm. to it mm. and that topped up with some of the equipment we've got in here has really helped us to pull it together mm. however mm. that has also come with some challenges because yes. you use the room a lot yes you have groups of friends who fill the room up that's right and you watch events yep and one of the challenges is that we had only very limited place to put speakers yep and so some of those people have got a speaker right in their ear that's right and you know and it's um hey most people that have come here have just sort of have been overwhelmed by everything it's like it's mm. it's just amazing mm. um but yeah it's always it's bugged me and i knew but i knew that um, by by going with the Trinov system, because mm. um, I'd seen all of your videos about Trinov, <laughs> that you know you can dial individual speakers up and down, and you can you can you can calibrate for every chair in the house, yep. you know, um, mm. and and you can change these settings as you go. So that's actually exactly what we did. So we, we spent a long a, time on a that. full yep. room setting, mm. and we have a setting where it's it's maybe just Christine and I. Sitting yeah, you've got there. the king and queen seat sort yep. of thing, and then we've got uh, for one of a better description of sports mode, yep. which is when you are watching your sports, yep. and the house is full we've we've been able to dial down the surrounds but interestingly not with a lot of loss because no. when we were listening to the content the sports mode pushes the surround sound very much to the surround speakers yes yes so we dialed it down and it actually brought back some balance i feel yeah yep and yeah. so now we can have people sitting with their ear up against the speaker yep um the speaker's slightly higher than the head so we need that yeah um but it's turned out to work exceptionally well i mean to be fair Every seat in the house actually is pretty good. It, it is. sounds it's pretty awesome. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, another challenge that we actually faced is that there aren't, there's no formal acoustic treatment in here. Mm. It's, it's actually curtains. It's literally mm. in behind the curtains, there's a block wall. Mm. Uh, but it's only curtains on two sides, the left side and the rear and behind. And then on the right-hand side, we have a bar in the room, mm. which is um, actually makes the room not perfectly symmetrical mm. as well. So mm. we've actually got one of the one of the speakers literally up behind the mm. sink in the bar, mm. um, so that it's it's aligned correctly. Mm. Um, and then of course the Trinov has given us some additional delays and whatnot, secret magic source to mm. actually make that appear a little bit more forward than mm. perhaps it really mm. is mm. from the listening. And it, it works amazingly. Mm. But going back to the acoustic side of things and the acoustic treatment, um, you know what what's your feelings on how it's come out given you know we've got we've got an Ortex Q product in the top which is sort of made from recycled milk bottles it's not an official audio mm. product but it's not a regular flat ceiling either look uh, we we actually had a conversation about this mm. um, and what you are chasing in a room is uh, sort of a planned effort at randomness. What I mean by that, and we talked about standing mm. in a forest, and I was going to shoot a video in a forest talking about acoustics. Yeah. If you stand in a forest, at the bark of a tree and the shape of the tree becomes a diffuser. Mm. The distance becomes your absorber, mm. and the ground becomes your reflect reflective surface, and, and maybe any other things around. Um, and and that is a, a fairly random nature, in it, but it creates this this nice sound. What I think has happened in this room is that yes. It is sort of an uncontrolled randomness, hard surfaces, curtains, carpet, but the RT60 time in this room is good. 
and um, it's got a really natural sound about it. And I think that, um, you know, I'd like to say it's highly planned, but I think what we've done is, or what you've done, mm. is in this room, due to the curvature of the walls and, and various other things, um, you've you've got this sound that sounds really natural. Mm. Um, I do want to quickly address, there is a theory that if you use curved walls that it affects standing waves, mm. and it's true, but the problem is you can't predict it. Yeah. Right, so, yeah. uh, you know, we've had customers say, I want, you know, angular walls, uh, and um, the reason we generally use rectangular rooms is because you can predict what's happening, and mm. therefore you can have a fair idea of the outcome. Yep. So I, I think the caution to people is, yes, this has worked really well in this room, but just doing it doesn't... Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> it. It just means that if, if you do it, that's fine, mm. but the it's much, much harder to predict the outcome. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's worked here, and it's worked exceptionally well. It has, exactly. And, we, and I guess we haven't actually talked about the gear that we're using in here, mm -hmm. so let, let's maybe sure. ch chat about that a little bit, because we ultimately did have different choices of, of what might come in but this this I, I essentially left it to you guys to mm. put whatever you felt was the right gear for the room yeah yeah and so so what what's been chosen what have we got here so we decided we opted for Priscilla speakers in here we've got distance so um, they were chosen because of the compression drivers so we've got p6vs around fairly exclusively for the surrounds yep so four of them we've got four of them yep um, behind okay. the screen we've got uh, p8s Three. Um, we've also got uh, two rail subwoofers behind the screen. Yep. Uh, there's another one hidden behind the chair there. Yep. And there's one actually sort of above behind the my head, up behind high, the head yeah. over there. So yep. there's four subs in so a row. They're smaller ones, and then <coughs> yep. the, so big, we've got the big ones. So we've got the fifteens. Yep. And uh, then that's that's it in terms of speakers. The ceiling speakers are four, well, four Atmos, two above us, yeah. and then two you know above the, the back. Yeah. Yeah. So we have four Atmos speakers yep. at the top here. Oh, and uh, I had two um, rear surrounds, which the, are the... Oh, the dipoles. Yeah, yep. yep. so, so they're existing yep. ones I had. Yep. And I actually I actually said at the time, I wouldn't mind trying to keep them, but I'm open to changing them once you get here yeah. and, and, and wait till you get here. And I think this comes back to the conversation, mm. you know, and I'm not one to dismiss an idea quickly. Yep. So, you know, and I'm actually not... You know, dipole speakers sort of have been left and p people have moved on. Yep. And but I, this is a really unusual place to put, you know, on a yep. back wall where we're sitting on yep. the back wall. I mean, that's not a yep. normal... Setup. And I wanted to leave them here yep. and I wanted to, to work with them yes. and I wanted to see the result and yep. it's worked really, yep. really well. Yep. So I, I'd say the only yep. negative thing with them would be, again, and it's an issue with the room in general and, and the fact that we're sitting on the back wall mm. is that anybody sitting directly behind one mm. of those dipoles mm. might get one in their ears. But we can tune that down and we have got settings for that. And I, I think the important thing to touch on there is this also is, um, and I hope this mm. has come across, I'm not sure, but we don't just calibrate. We've spent some time oh, yeah. hopefully teaching and training and educating you that's right. on being able to drive your trend off. It's not mm. a case of... So that's the next piece of equipment, is the trend off. Yes, you yes, it is. Get out of the bag. Well, um, we've been addressing I have. That, obviously. Um, so, so there's a trend off <laughs> in the room. It's a trend off altitude 16. Yep. And, and every um, channel's used. Yep, every channel's used. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think that's the important. We, we want to enable customers. You know, th sometimes we feel that people go in, install the Trinov, tune it, walk away, and they leave this black mystery box mm, there, mm. and the client doesn't know what to do with it. Yep. Um, so our philosophy is very much uh, enable the client. Yep. Right? Yep. Um, and that touches on another brief subject, which is also remote access and support. Yes. So all of the products in the room, we'll roll on to the next ones, yep. are pretty much remotely accessible and supportable. Yep, yep. So if we move on from the Trinov Altitude 16, then that rolls into a MadVR uh, NV uh, Extreme. That's right, yep. yes. Um, yep. Which uh, I think you're quite enjoying. And oh. then that rolls on to the projector, which is a Barco Bragi. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, so we've got remote access to the Trinov, we've got remote access to the MadVR, which means we can provide that support. Yep. You know, we are working from a distance, so we're, at, we're at arm's length. Yep. And uh, also with the uh, Barco projector. The Barco projector is an amazing piece of gear. Mm. Um, I mean, the other good thing is that the actual working interface, the HTML interface on it is mm. very cool. Mm. Um, it's, so, I mean, no, it has not <laughs> been without its fair share of challenges. You yeah. know? <laughs> And you know it's, and that's to be expected. You know, we I've had got, some I've late a, nights. Yeah, and I've, but I've got yeah. even before that. You know, yeah. even when I was setting up remote. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's um, I, I'm I'm technical mm. with all of this, yeah. and I can talk to you a, 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 in a technical way, yes, and we can resolve yeah. problems together yeah. quite easily. Um, but 
we're still at the mercy of um, different brands and, and different software that's driving them. And, you know, ca cables, systems. cables yep. that, yeah. you know, and, you know, you start doubting yourself when you're doing things. And, you know, we, we had challenges with cabling. And, HTCP um, issues. Yeah, yeah, and HTCP issues, playing playing havoc on the equipment. Mm. Um, all of it's solvable, mm. but it's it's a it's a process that we had to work through. So, you know, it's, it's I'd have to say, it's not for the faint-hearted to mm. just sort of suddenly get a pallet of gear and then go and set it up yourself. I wouldn't recommend that to anybody unless <laughs> you've got a lot of free time on your yeah. hands and you're absolutely devoted to it. Well, let's, we had a few challenges and I, I think that takes us to an interesting topic. Yep. Um, and I think you said it, you yep. know, we were having breakfast this morning yep. and we talked about the fact that when you open the front door, yes, there's one guy standing there, mm. but we are very pleased and honoured and... Um, grateful mm. to have an amazing team behind us and yep. through the last three days and, and and before when you when we had some technical challenges yes. months ago and when yes. you were first setting up yep. the the really cool thing was that we were able to connect to uh, a, a, the organizations and the companies at a very high level yep and you know i mean we've had Whilst I've been here, we've had Barco on the phone. Yeah, well, had, Barco from the, the UK, you know, yes, from the UK. To be from, fair, we've yes. been in here at 11, 12 o'clock yeah, at night. Absolutely. But, uh, it's on the phone, on speakerphone. Yep. Just yep. literally try this, download this, do this update do that. this, yep. Re restart this three um, times. I think that's really important. It's not just the person who turns up on your doorstep. Yep. It's who's standing behind it's them. It's the network. And yep. for me to be able to go, okay, issue with Trinov, phone Michael or, or phone Tom. Yep. And, you know, issue with um, Barco, phone Andy. Yep. And, and we have access to those people mm. and they and have, we have most still... definitely used them in this in oh yes this, you know, at yep. every yep. single stage yep. and uh to to an amazing end result so a big thank you to you guys you know to yep. all the guys um uh, especially at, at um, bar country and who've really been there when we've needed them it's been fantastic so. and and i've seen it from andrew's side it's a high pressure um situation you know, andrew's been here for for just over a week in mm. total and he's he's not has not just been doing my theater cinema you've mm. also been doing another one I here have, in yeah. christchurch and so you know you've you've got allocated time for each of us that's great but you know you you you're juggling different plates and you're dealing with different challenges at each side very different challenges mm. at each side mm. what what are your what are your thoughts you've now witnessed yes you're a witness to the deep dark secrets of calibration yep. What was it like for you? Was it more or less? Was it more complex? Was it, it what? What was that journey like for you? Because I mean, I you know, it's something that I work with every day. Mm, I love. If I'm, I'm different, I, I, it was exactly how I expected it to go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I think I've dealt in the tech world so much mm. that I know I am never surprised mm. when a software update doesn't work or a software update breaks something. Mm. Um, you know, I'm never surprised, mm. and uh, you know, it's yeah. I, I think those chatting to you about your many many. Uh, tales of, of installs, um, they haven't all been like this one. I mean, I've got a really solid internet connection here. Um, I've done all the prep work. I've got everything wired in. It's it's like you sat in here and we watched it before you even touched it. Yeah. And I think you were yeah. pretty impressed just with oh, how well, you I did a great job. Yeah. I, I, I just want to speak to that for a second. This mm. is really important, folks. I can't stress enough how important it is to have a stable, reliable uh, <laughs> network Yes. behind your home theatre now. It is the heartbeat and it is the blood supply that, yep. I mean, it, it, for some people it's control systems, for us it's remote access, mm. uh, it's content, yep. uh, it's uh, support, it's calibration, it is, you know, communication. And, but you, and, you yeah. also have to deal with sites that are, um, that will, will have, well, like, to a degree, me. I mean, I had some some equipment on my own, but to be fair, I got I changed most of. It. I gave you a pretty open mm -hmm. open book to you do did, whatever yeah. you like. Yeah. But but some sites have constrictions or have got gear that they've not necessarily got from you, mm. or it's not necessarily gear you're even familiar with. Mm. Um, that you have to then uh, get familiar with, mm. um, get going, and then calibrate ultimately. So yep, yep. I guess that can also be a curveball when you turn up and it's like. Okay, I, I, it's hard to plan for that, isn't it? There's there's a lot of unpredictability in this job. You yep. don't know, and even if you've done all the due diligence, even if you've asked about products and you, you have an idea of what you're working into, you don't know what you're going to stumble across and often what the customer perceives or thinks of something. You know, for a customer, sometimes they'll say to us, yes, everything's working, everything's fine. I get there, I find out four speakers aren't working and they haven't yeah. been for a long time. And then we realise that there's a problem with an amp or a problem with a DAC or a problem with this or a problem with that. 
um, that they didn't know, and that wasn't planned on. And it's know, challenging so. when you're in a different country. Yes. I mean, it's less challenging if you're in Perth. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's literally, I'll, I'll back to the back to the shop. Yep. I'll grab some more gear, and I'll just quickly swap that out, and we'll be up and running. But it's not like mm. that here. You know, you've got yeah. a time frame to work with, and you've a big commitment to come over. Yeah. And I mean, what a what an awesome thing! And I mean, obviously, thank you so much for for coming and taking taking that time to, to come and and involve and do this. And mm. uh, yeah, that's been really really. Amazing. I'm a bit of a convert on um, home theatre installers now, when they know what they're doing. <laughs> okay. So where are you at now? <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm loving it. I'm ready to just sit back and enjoy mm. enjoy it now. Um, it's it's set up exactly how we want it. You know, we've we've got these colours just absolutely schmickety schmoo. Um, to be honest, the bulk of what I watch is, as I said earlier, it's coming off Apple mm. Apple streaming services, mm -hmm. and so. And and that's getting better and better it as is, well. Yep. Yeah, the, this this equipment does a great job at, at bringing it all to life. So, yeah, I'm just looking forward to cracking into it and, and using it and enjoying it now. So you took a big risk. Yep. You worked with a remote company. Yep. Um, we've been here and calibrated the job. Um, yeah, I, I think... It's been a story of trust. Um, me, uh, obviously, um, trusting that you guys can are going to get the right gear for me because, you know, it's... it's um, it's expensive gear and we're shipping it across mm. the world. It's not like I can switch it out if it's, I'm mm. not happy with it. So mm. there is that. Um, it's been you know, the initial trust, I guess, of my mm. architect and him coming up with this, this great plan. Um, and, you know, the end result, I think, speaks for itself. Yeah. I'm, abs I'm absolutely delighted. I, know I don't want this to sound like a cheesy sales video, but I'm absolutely delighted. You know, I, I, it's amazing. We had an interesting conversation because I think you said to me, if I wanted to spend more money on this, what would you do? Yep, that's yeah. right. And uh, my response was, you know what, I, I, there is a diminishing law of returns. Yes, you can always put more expensive gear in, but in the experience in this room, just, it's not needed, is it? I, there's not much that I can yeah, think I, of. I yeah, we've change. hit peak room. Mm. We've hit peak, <laughs> peak room. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's yeah, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't want to change. I don't wouldn't yeah. want to change anything. I just think it's now. I think any gains from here would be small and incremental. Yes, mm. yep. yeah. Mm. No, that's fantastic. Well, mm. once again, Thanks so much for, for obviously coming over and, and um, thanks for uh, including New Zealand in your growing list of, I guess, custom, global customers. It's been a real pleasure. Um, it's been an, in, if this job particularly, it's been a fascinating journey. Given the architect of the room, you know, your requirements, the, the rules that you lay down and, um, you know, just, I, I think, again, as you said, without sounding cheesy, I'm really grateful that you know, sight unseen and from a distance that you trusted us mm. and and that we've got here. And and hopefully in what you've seen the last few days has just um, validated your your choice in the first place. So mm. yeah, mm. thank you. And I'm I'm really grateful for all of your subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber of your channel, I'd imagine oh, please you do. probably would want to subscribe to such a channel because yeah. When people click that subscribe button, mm. what they're saying is like, I like the work that you guys are doing. And and when they click the like button, it mm. typically says, I'd like to see more of this type of content. Because it's it's not easy for you to make content like this. And I, I'm making this content for you. So, yeah, yeah. Because no, I know true. I love yeah. content, but yeah. it's like, um, you don't get a lot of time to make content, so no, it's, well, you it's can a lot see, of work I mean, and we, it pays off. We were up till midnight the other yep. night, yep. And, and you know, yes, I'm sorry, our content has dropped off, yep. but um, our workload is. But you've got up, plans, so, so we have make plans. sure everybody does does click the like, does subscribe, and thank does you. support the channel, and does comment because it's it's awesome content. And uh, thank you, thanks very much, it's mate. Been a pleasure, thank I you. I look forward to it. All right, yeah, bye. excellent.